So essentially the human genome is a bunch of chemicals um, and it's, it's a bunch of simple molecules that are in, ordered in a way that has meaningful information. Um, but the real, the real way I came into studying genomics is, is, um, was through chemistry but in a very odd twist of fate. Um, I went, to, went from undergraduate loving chemistry and decided that that's what I wanted to pursue in graduate school. And at the time I was studying chemistry in graduate school, the human genome was sequenced. And now I had a whole new playground that I became interested in. I became less interested in understanding how these, what these chemicals looked like, but rather understanding how these chemicals could be combined to provide information and how a cell would know what to be. Um, and I became very intrigued by this idea that the exact same human genome is, is in every cell in our body yet cell, all sorts of different cellular phenotypes occur. You get an eye cell, a liver cell, a heart cell, a brain cell, but it's all bred off the exact same template. And so I became fascinated completely irrespective of chemistry. It was just sort of a side door of understanding this question. Now that we had this sequence, what parts of it were being read by different cells that would make them into a brain cell, a liver cell, or a heart cell? My, my favorite question right now is this the exact same genome is in every cell in our body and somehow this genome knows how to replicate itself and then take on different shapes to produce a heart cell, a brain cell, a liver cell, or a kidney cell. And what we're, our research is pointing to is that RNA may be causing the shape of, of the genome. So you can imagine this in a couple ways. One of my favorite analogies is, is the genome is a blank sheet of paper. Um, and what, this, what you can do with a blank sheet of paper is fold it up into these origami shapes. For instance, you can take a blank sheet of paper and fold it into one of these doves that, that flies. And what we think is happening is RNA is causing these folds in the paper or the genome to package it up and let some areas be open and exposed like the wings and some parts of the paper being buried and inaccessible that make up the body of it. Um, and just by changing folds slightly, you can change from a dove to um, all sorts of different shapes um, that, that we've all seen in these um, origamis. So I like to think of RNA as a potential way of doing genomic origami. And if we could, by looking at multiple different cell types and which RNAs are in each one, we can deduce which folds are being made by which RNAs. And if we could deconvolute that code, which is very difficult, and that's what we'll be pursuing for the next 10 years, but it has a lot of promise in the sense that imagine you have this dove in this beautiful shape, and in cancer, one of the wings breaks. But if we knew which RNA had actually made that wing fold in the first place, we could put that RNA back into a cell and fix damaged genomes. Um, and that's really the overall hope, is that if, uh, if we could sort of if a secret master of origami gave us the code of all the folds to do like you would follow in a direction book, then we could fold the genome into any shape we wanted. We could engineer the blank sheet of paper sort of like a stem cell. It's a genome with no shape. And so if we could figure this out, we could not only fix broken genomes, uh, but we could make any genome of our choosing in shape.